Good day to all of you out there in Tone Town. We have the chairman back with you for this fine day. And with us, we have an amazing guest who I think has made quite a splash in the pedal community over the last several years. It is none other than Chris Robinson from Pedal Pawn. And they not only offer some amazing vintage inspired effects. But also I have to say, Chris, of all of the pedal companies that are doing YouTube, I feel like you are one of a select few that is, has really seemed to have found the, the nerve of the people in the guitar community. And you've really been able to create amazing short videos and, and clips and things that, that are very provocative that whenever I see them, <laughs> Not even knowing that they're pedal pawn, I am immediately interested in a guitar player on uh, clicking on them to see what Eric Clapton said or to see what Stevie Ray Vaughan said or to see what John Mayer said because they are so perfectly framed. I feel like you are the expert of the thumbnail and the title that's going to get somebody to click. So congratulations on all of those fronts. It's, it's an honor to have you here today. Damn, thank you. That's a, that's a great intro. I'm very, very happy with that intro. But likewise, back to you guys, like you, you guys are all smashing it. And when I got the email from you, I was like super stoked to be able to come on and talk. So yeah, thank you for having me. So if, if Chris, be before we start is just sort of a, a preamble to things. If people have never heard of, of Pedal Pond, in your words, how would you describe what you, what you and your team go for, what the products are sort of rooted in? I feel like you'll be better able to explain it than than I am as as somebody who who is behind these products. Okay, yeah. Well, so we are the the best guitar pedal manufacturer in the world. Um, yes, we, yeah. undisputed, actually. Undisputed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. We. Um, I mean, it's all stemming from me as a player. Really, I've just always had these tones that I want to get out from my mind onto paper, so to speak, and it's always been derived from like the Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan and John Mayer vibe, which I know Mason, you, um, you certainly, you know, resonate with that kind of niche yeah. as well. And, um, yeah, we're just trying to get as many tones out to as many people as we can. And like you say, the social media side of it has been, uh, just crazy the last few years. And yeah, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a crazy journey really, but, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I answered your question there. <laughs> oh, I, I think I think I think you answered it. Um, if we were again to to kind of explain to somebody who you know hasn't heard of your products, like what are sort of the range of effects that you currently offer in in your lineup? Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm happy to to to, to tell us to say what I what I'm aware of, but I feel like you've you guys have got some stuff that's really unique. Like I I never saw anybody, for example trying to go after any of the Caesar Diaz effects before I saw you guys with that treble booster and, and the tremolo. And for those of you who aren't aware of Caesar Diaz, long, you know, long time technician and, and also built custom amps for Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, and had a line of effects that, you know, are, are, are pretty expensive now if you can find them. And, uh, Chris and his team have, have recreated, uh, exact replicas of those that are, you know, faithful reproductions. And I remember, I think the first time I ever saw an effect from you is Eric Gales demonstrating the uh, treble booster. But oh, Eric what are some of the other things that you guys offer other than the Caesar Diaz kind of inspired tremolo treble booster? What else is, is in the lineup? Well, we make quite a um, faithful recreation of the original Univibe, of course, yep. which is like, you know, one of the most classic effects ever. And uh, we, I tend to, I, right now, it's quite a limited range, if, if I'm being honest, but we sort of go after, if you imagine what Hendrix would have used live, we tend to try and recreate anything that he would have used or what Stevie would have used live. And like you say, the Caesar Diaz stuff was really, no one was really doing it, but I was like, I, I, I managed to find some of those Caesar Diaz Texas Squareface um, pedals back in the day on Facebook Marketplace over here. And they were like 50, <laughs> they were like 50 pounds. I bought wow. one for like, which is like probably like seventy dollars or something, and I was just I was like, why does no one know about this? Why is no one? I mean, Philips Philips Ace was using them and talking about them a bit, but apart from that and a few other guys, there wasn't many people talking about them. So I was just like, it had that extra glassy cleanup with your guitar, your strat, and I was like, if we can try and incorporate this and 
get it out there. I think that's the sound that people are looking for right now that no one's getting. So that's how that that whole thing came about. But yeah, apart from that, we've got a few things coming out in the next few weeks actually. But um, it's yeah, apart from apart from the Caesar stuff, it's like yeah, the, the vibe that um, an octone, which is like the recreation of the uh, Octavia that Hendrix would use, like you know, octave fuzz, like nasty. Uh, you know that purple haze sound and yeah yeah uh, that's it so when you um <clears throat> excuse me when you kind of first got started and and i don't know what year that would have exactly been but i assume you were a guitar player first you grew up on these albums potentially or these artists for for those of you guys listening as well uh hendrix and stevie ray vaughn john mayer all musicians if you were yeah. curious who we were talking about, <laughs> they are. They musicians. Are. They are. Um, so, in that realm of music, uh, if we're going to stay general here, you were playing guitar. Love these artists. Are you also? Have you studied electronics? You're like, I can do something with this. Like, I can, I can recreate these sounds. Or uh, were you more looking at, you know, circuits? Or you had someone that was near you that could help, and that kind of got this whole thing started. Like, what was the story of the beginning of? pedal pawn i guess in that realm yes that's a good question actually i mean i used to buy and sell a lot of old fuzz faces and stuff like that i used to as as a player you know what it's like you know you can buy one it doesn't quite sound right you put it on reverb and you know you can probably get your money back but in the process of doing that a lot of the pedals would come broken you know like a battery snap would be broken or the pot would die and i naturally made connections with the local engineers in my area who were 60 years ahead of what I could be even if I'd spent 10 years doing it so I used to take these old effects to these guys and I made great connections with them and I remember once I went around to one of their houses and um, this guy our, our, our original engineer handed me uh, a fuzz pedal which was like had no name on it he just wired it that night and I plugged it in and he was working in like a little shed and it literally blew the shed up. It was like the biggest sound I've ever heard. <laughs> and at, at that time, that's when I had the Caesar stuff. And I, I said to him, can you tweak what you've just made and incorporate exactly what I'm looking for? And he handed it back. and He wasn't quite right. I kept asking him to tweak it to my ears. And eventually we got the first prototype of what I was looking for as a player. So I'm not necessarily the um, electronics guru behind the company, but I have guys that I literally... They've been doing it their whole lives and they are um, a super, super valuable asset to me as a guitar player and a, the owner of the company. So That's awesome. And I feel like one of the awesome. one of the trickiest things, I mean, I'm not I'm not an electrical engineer either. Um, but one of the trickiest things and one of the things I value the most is someone that has that ear. And a lot of times, like you say, like these guys are sixty years ahead of you in an electronic yeah. experience or electrical engineering, whatever it might be. But you, I think, maybe unknowingly over decades have put in this time to refine your ear listening to albums and albums. And then you hear this fuzz that this engineer has created like, no, it's not quite there. It needs more glass. Like the bottom end isn't quite right. And you might not be able to draw the schematics, mm. but you can keep pushing for tweaks and changes until you get what your ear says is like, yeah, that's, that's right. That's the one we need. That's and exactly think, it. It's like, uh, sorry. Yeah. It's like bridging, bridging the gap, isn't it? That where my yeah. yeah expertise aren't quite there. They have that in abundance and, but they don't necessarily have the ears or know what the market would need. And it's the perfect blend of what those two things that for me is made it what it, what it is right now. So, so, so in other words, Chris is the Steve Jobs in, in, in this <laughs> scenario. <laughs> He's got the, you've got the Wozniak in he his the vision. He has the yeah. vision. Yeah. Hey, you're just missing the, uh, you, the black uh, yeah, turtleneck. Turtleneck. Turtlenecks, yeah. yeah he needs, <laughs> we need to involve more turtlenecks, uh, yeah. Chris. So. <laughs> but short sleeve. Nobody's ringing short sleeve turtlenecks in. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's our new go. merch. Our new merch coming in 2024. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I was gonna ask, how long have you guys been a company for? I guess how long you've been doing it? Since, I mean, since well, the start, not a company. Yeah, officially, our first um, own branded product was in 2019, like April 2019. Before that, I was doing all the. I had my reverb shop, which was called Pedal Porn, but it wasn't an official company. And then uh, it's it's funny. It time it timed really well. The the day we sold our first pedal is the day that I launched my limited company in the UK. So it was like perfect timing. So um, it, all, it all happened quite nice and natural. 
Very I was cool. actually watching your podcast Very cool. um, in, a, in a long car journey uh, a few days back to a, a gig and I was listening to all your guys' you know, stories and um, I could resonate with like all of the stories you guys were going on about with them um, at the start with all the, the headaches and just the, like, I, don't, I, I just really resonated with that podcast where you guys were talking about all your journeys and I was like, that was proper like inspiring to listen yeah. to. So yeah, like kudos right back to you guys. So yeah, that's cool. Sounds like you were in a uh, a car on a long journey on the way to Tokyo. Yeah. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Yeah. It is uh, it is incredibly. Uh, there are some days, and and maybe for those listening, if you've ever thought about, you know, you see what maybe Brian does with setups or what Chris is doing with pedals, and you know, it can especially on social media, it can seem so uh, romanticized. But there are days where it's just I'm just ripping my hair out. Like, why can't I figure this out? Or why isn't that happening? Like, I planned for this to happen a certain way, and then it goes off on, you know, on the rails a different direction and stuff. And uh, there are some really amazing days. And uh, I, I personally absolutely love what I do. I'm doing my dream job, but uh, it it definitely doesn't mean it's easy, and it is very frustrating. Have you, Chris, had any? I don't know any stories you can share of maybe some of the struggles that you've had since 2019 getting this thing going like uh and and potentially have overcome now looking back oh da- yeah i don't, don't know where to start with that one because there's, <laughs> there's literally uh, so right. many um yeah honestly it's like what well, well, one that just sprung to my mind which is not even a big deal looking back on it but um just i this is so many times i mean I, there was times where i was literally out in um my dad's shed and we were pan screen printing all of the enclosures at one point and it's a smelly job yes that's right yeah and yep. we had a lot of orders for the the text and twang that we make and we was like back ordered about 100 and we needed to get them out this this moment and uh, no, nothing was going right it was a freezing cold uh night in the winter over in wales uh, here in the uk and um literally we couldn't mix the um, the screen printing ink correctly with all of the uh, the thinners and the hardeners and stuff and we were printing it it was just rubbing straight off we were trying to bake it in the oven they were coming out black because um, we would put the heat the temperature was oh. too, too high it was just everything was going wrong and um, I then had to drive there with no sleep go to my engineer's house the next day to then get him to wire uh, the, the enclosures it was just like I was just driving around continuously for hours and hours and it was like sort of chasing your tail sort of thing. And uh, yeah, that was just one one night I just spr- sprung to my mind because that was a really grueling cold night where I was like, this is, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, it questions, you, you know, you have to uh, question if you want to do it, if you want to keep doing it. But yeah, it's like, like you say, that's part of the, um, pe- people tend to see the highlight reel on Instagram and YouTube totally. and yeah, they don't see like the, the, the crazy um, 2 a.m. stuff like that. Finishes and yeah, screen yeah. printing exactly. not working and yeah. Uh, what, what about you guys? What what's the, what's the, what are the worst nights you can remember? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll go. I I had one shoot. I think this is one that I built it here at the shop, and then I wasn't done because I worked ten hour days. So then I got done, and I wasn't done with the physical board, and I put it in my car, and I took it home, and. The dinner with our kids and my wife put the kids to bed and I was like, babe, I got to work on this. I'm sorry. And I think I was up till five or six o'clock the next morning still figuring out because I had this buzz. Um, and it was, it's this little stuff that you don't think about that nowadays. You were like, oh man, that was super easy, but it, it came to. <laughs> it's no. just got a buzz on. <laughs> no, I, 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 after I figured like out I what the issue was, I definitely, <laughs> definitely drank something. And um, I found out it was a switcher system that I wasn't familiar with using. And that's typically when you see like setups and stuff, I'll stick to a certain range of certain switchers that I'm more comfortable with because I know the ins and outs of them and whatnot. <laughs> but this is like a guy's like it's a new one i would love to try it. it's in the kickstarter i'm like okay sure we'll try it so i did all the same stuff but i left the usb cable plugged into the computer while i was testing everything and i had this really bad buzz all day i couldn't find it i checked every <laughs> connection i unplugged that freaking usb cable at five o'clock in the morning and the buzz went away and I called the, I didn't call them. I emailed them because they're overseas. I can't remember where. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's an issue. We're still figuring it out. 
it's just gonna buzz if you leave it plugged in. I was like, what? So <laughs> there's stuff like that that now I have like a list of stuff that I troubleshoot and I ask questions. But that for me was a nightmare because I I think I worked like 27 hours on it just, and the board was supposed to be done in like 20 hours. So that extra seven hours was just like fully on my own time figuring it out and then i had to be at work three hours later so oh man <laughs> that's me that was mine i think my worst was this year was more recently i was i did a big setup or goodwood did a big setup uh for a customer fedex totaled it so it was about a 40 40 hour build fedex totaled it couldn't couldn't be used uh eventually line it up with the customer to rebuild it from scratch so i drove down to washington i'm up in canada i drove down to washington uh had a little like tinge in my throat while i was driving oh, that's fine we'll we'll quickly get this done in two days i slept there and then i was gonna drive back got covid and the board was way more time than i thought it was gonna be second time around i thought i'd fly through it i <laughs> overestimated my abilities and so i had covid and i was literally building this board blanket wrapped around me shivering for it was about 35 hours of building and i was working like oh. into the night and all that and i then gave my uh one of my guys one of my team i gave him covid and then he had to isolate after i left and like he has young kids and a family like super inconvenient for him and he had to isolate then i went home and i just disappeared for a few days uh but that was uh that was not fun but at the same time i mean mason i'm sure you have some stories as well but like if you aren't passionate about what you're doing and i'm sure you can relate chris like you will not be willing to do what it takes to get the job done like staying up till whatever hour it was when you finished screen printing those enclosures that were not you know coming yeah. together uh you really have to enjoy it so that when things go horribly wrong you won't be having the great time but uh you'll be able to at least make it through the other end you know 100 percent. damn that's um yeah mason have you got anything crazy <laughs> well i'd say the the most there there's been many uh but i'd say the <laughs> most recent one was when we were we we did a, a we've been doing a small run of about 16 amplifiers a year uh, and they're in essence 50 watt versions of a steel string singer so smaller combo 112 combos and the the first run we had we had done uh, and and uh, I think it was either four or six amps that were all going to to Sweetwater and we had brought one to Sweetwater for uh to, to do a presentation and demonstration to kind of prepare the launch so that when the amp was officially released, they had a video in already ready to go and that could kind of be uh, aligned with the, with the release and, and all that stuff. And it, it just so happened that while we were there and demonstrating it, the, the Vox team was there and we had used the Vox style checkered grill cloth that you would find ordinarily in a dumble style uh amplifier oh no and and we had also the amps already there kind of ready to go not only the the, the demonstration model but the you know the four or the six that they were going to be carrying and a day later got a cease and desist to say oh. that you that the amps could not go live with this grill cloth you know because it was a violation of of a uh, you know, a, a trademark of, of Vox having the diamond grill cloth. Wow. So we had to, you know, all basically the time that we had spent other than the presentation, the video couldn't go live. The products had to be recalled back to us for us to recover. Luckily, it was just the, the grill cloth, but the consequence of that was not only recovering the amps, but like taking new photos because all of them that show the front of the amplifier were now, you know, not, not going to be able to be usable. So it was, it was a, a, a it was quite a, a nightmare, you know, in, in shipping, you know, six amps, you know, from, you know, where we manufactured them to Sweetwater was, you know, not inexpensive because, you know, they're in their, in their shipping boxes or maybe, I don't know, close to 50 pounds each. And then shipping them back to us, recovering the, the grill cloth, 
shipping them back to Sweetwater, you know, having to reshoot, you know, the videos and, and, uh, it, it was just, you know, it was, it was nothing that time and money couldn't fix, but sometimes it's, it's just, uh, you know, delaying something that, uh, that you've been trying to get, get going for a while. The, the frustration of that, it definitely will test your patience. That's for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that was that Good was uh, that was the story of the uh, the early days of the <laughs> the the doctor special custom clean, um, but uh, nevertheless, it's been it, it's it's been a fine amp and it, and it just all turned out fine. But I still think it looked way better with the checkered grill cloth that we're not able to use. So did Vox <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so did and I will it, say it's a beautiful grill cloth. It was it, but the black one. The yeah, black the cloth? black still looks great. Nah, it's just you know amazing. that to me the 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 quintessential Dumble look is is the the Vox grill cloth and and you know I, I understandably there are you know companies still seem to get away with it. I don't know exactly what their technique is. Like maybe it ships to the dealers in a conventional grill cloth, and then the dealers at their own discretion change it themselves, and so that the manufacturer is none the wiser or are they we don't know but uh <laughs> <laughs> beyond the realm of what uh what what vox can can come after them for i suppose but yeah apparently that that diamond grill cloth pattern is 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 uh is is all locked up with vox so just I always for love it when, out there yeah, i always love it when like, someone gets uh, i love it when someone gets the chance to release something like that and then the cease and desist comes a week after, and then someone, all these customers have the the rare version, and then it yes. goes on reverb. Yeah, it goes on yeah. reverb for like ten times the price. So it's like that, that's what it, that's the only time it's some good of it, some good. Yeah, out of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the challenge with that, you know, like that can be cool from the from the manufacturing standpoint. Luckily, it didn't get to that for us. But I know yeah. a lot of times if stuff does go out. Uh, I had spoken with some other brands and companies that have had similar run-ins, not with Vox specifically, but just in in that range where they, I, th I think the term is called disgorge uh, funds. So basically, they're they have to pay the company. Like in this case, you know, it wasn't, but it you know it, it potentially could have been Vox to say, well, then on all the amps that you shipped, we we want an inventory of that, and then we're requesting that money back. To oh, us, the whole, because oh, the you whole violated or... our our trademark, and then presumably they probably reached some sort of settlement number, which is less than the full amount, but still they're getting some sort of oh, royalty man. or something like that. Jeez. So you know, maybe it was better that they didn't end up ever seeing the light of day, and and we were able to to resolve it before they they officially hit the marketplace. But it was just a lot of wasted energy. But before we go any further with that, I want to turn it over to Grant, who's going to talk to us about some of the sponsors that make our show possible every single week. Thanks, Mason. Yeah, I wanted to tell you guys about the Sweetwater Gear Exchange. This is the best place that you can buy and sell used gear online. And the reason it's the best, in my humble opinion, is because you can waive the seller fees. So in my mind, there is nothing worse than finally selling your used pedal or used guitar, whatever it might be, and then having to hand over 10 plus percent of that to the online retailer that helped you sell that thing with Sweetwater's gear exchange you can uh, sell your gear and you can put it on a Sweetwater gift card and keep all of the fees definitely worth checking out sweetwater.com forward slash used to sign up check it out see what's available and uh, also what you can sell so check them out sweetwater.com forward slash used also wanted to tell you about the guitar sanctuary.com. Brian is there right now. He's got his, I'm guessing that's a brown hat, brown uh, amplification. Thank you. He yep, is in the guitar sanctuary and some would say that's why he's smiling from ear to ear. The guitar <laughs> sanctuary makes people happy. The gear that we're chatting about today uh, is and on the podcast is almost always found at the guitar sanctuary. And more importantly, you can get Brian to set up your new gear on a pedal board, all at the Guitar Sanctuary. So check them out, theguitarsanctuary.com. Lastly, I want to tell you about Mono Creators. You can find them at monocreators.com. Uh, that's a good one. 
And the reason that we love Mono is they do some of the best soft bags. I have flown internationally with my soft bag, my soft mono bag and pedal board. Everything showed up perfectly fine on the other end, stowed underneath the plane from Sydney to uh, Vancouver. And so these bags are rugged, robust. The zippers are incredible. If you're ever going to go for anything, it's the zipper. They just never break. And so check out Mono Creators. They do the pedal boards. They do soft bags, gig bags, backpacks, whatever you need. And you can use a code chairman, C-H-A-I-R-M-E-N to get 10% off your order at monocreators.com. That is it, guys. So let's get back to, uh, let's get back to the podcast. Yeah. Are there any 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 final thoughts or stories on uh, night nightmarish manufacturing? Because <laughs> I I do want to hear about Chris's YouTube strategy. Um, you know, and, and one thing that's that I really appreciate about what you're doing on YouTube, Chris, is I think that that maybe the 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 flaw of a lot of manufacturers that try to enter into the YouTube space is that they maybe go too hard on only um, plugging their own products, and it can be difficult to build trust with an audience if the only thing that they see are how great your products are. And, and I think that, you know, it's, if, if I could be so bold as to, to make an outside assessment of, of the strategy, it seems like it's about, you know, 10 for them and one for you or something like that. And, uh, it seems like if I, if I could say that anybody has mastered the short, uh, video on YouTube, uh, it, it certainly has to be you guys in, in the, uh, manufacturer range. Do you, what do you, what are your uh, sort of strategies to the degree with which you're willing to share? And how did you kind of envision the approach that you wanted to take on YouTube? Because I think you guys are over, like you're over 200,000, aren't you? Well, uh, there's a funny story I did say about that, actually. You, you won't realize this, Mason, but um, y- you, <laughs> for me, but right, it's so funny, right? Because we were like really doing bad on YouTube. We had like, I was getting like 200 subscribers. Um, a month or no no it was it i'm trying to think it was it was like a thousand a year or something it was so bad like for the first year or two and then all of a sudden i started to work out the sh- when shorts came about it became a real thing and we started to climb up really fast and my my mission was to get to a hundred thousand subscribers before you <laughs> i would the birthday hey. channel. Oh. And, <laughs> um, I, I think i think you you you, you, you probably did no, i can't i no, can't no, see you didn't no we didn't because you were like um <laughs> uh, we were on 99 and you just hit the 100 cows like damn he's beat us he doesn't even know I didn't even know you at that point but I was like you were a good healthy bit of competition where I was thinking you know it's I could maybe just pip, pip you at the, the line there but uh, now nah, you beat us to it so what, fair, fair play so. <laughs> but, um, well I think I think you got to your, your, you got to 200,000 faster than we did so there there you go well we, we, yeah we still I mean it's it's a, a crazy game YouTube isn't it it's a very different platform to like TikTok and uh, Instagram and um, but it's funny you say about the the ten to one in terms of ratio of adding value to the audience as opposed to like buy our stuff because <laughs> someone said a comment the other day and it stuck with me. They were like, "Ah, oh, um, why are you trying to sell us something on your channel?" And I realized that they were watching us purely for the entertainment of you know getting value from us in some mm-hmm. way. And then when we actually did try to sell something, they were a bit shocked because they were just so used to getting um valuable content if, if we can call it that so that's what i'd say it's like that's my only real hack to growing on youtube is like try and actually add value to the audience and then they might want to keep watching and, and you know i've seen the same back in your direction it's like you can go and watch for example the the vertex youtube channel and get tremendous value and you want to stick there and you you do trust the person behind the the camera and like you say about sharing the um, sharing the love around, like I've seen you share things like the fun- funky vibe, like the Sabadia stuff. That you don't get anything out of that, but you're just sharing something that you've found, and it's like you know, it's a real cool thing for the audience to see. So yeah, that's a little bit of my insight to that. Yeah, yeah, I I think uh, you know even with this podcast, you know the 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 three of us are are. Uh, 
you know, in an attempt to share, I think, insights in 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 tricks and tips, you know, when when the video applies to that, um, that it, it surprises me, and I think part of the thing that that we all talked about, you know, between Brian Grant and, and I is that a lot of the guys that are doing pedal board rig building, a lot of them are very secretive, you know, or they mm. don't want to, they don't want to give up any sort of industry secrets because I think that they feel protective that if somebody were to know what they knew, that somehow it would undermine their ability to be able to, to sell their service. And, and I think, you know, if I could be so bold as to speak for the three of us, I, I think ultimately if somebody knows that information, there's limited things that they could act on that would so, that would in turn undermine our, our ability to to do our jobs. And in fact, I think it gives us more opportunities where people get to see that, you know, Brian is forthcoming with you know the way that he does his routing or the way that he puts on dual lock Velcro or the way that he <laughs> goes about organizing a signal path or how Grant goes about, you know, deciding how he's going to organize pedals on different tiers or whatever the, the trick may be. Ultimately, somebody who's motivated to do it themselves is going to do it themselves. And whether they have the information from us or not, they're still going to be doing it themselves. They've just now figured out a better way to, to do it, you know, by way of information that we maybe give away. And then I think it gives people who aren't otherwise motivated to do it themselves, they can see clearly that there are people that are real experts at these things and that they can delegate this to and they're happy to pay for the service. And so I think it has a sort of a twofold benefit to being out there sharing this information. And I think some of the old guard is very resistant to this. And I think that, and, and maybe it was true in the 80s and the 90s, that was all you could do is just protect what you knew and you wanted to keep that, you know, really safe and secret and nobody knew. And, you know, that was part of the uh, the mystique that you brought to the world. But uh, I, I'm I'm glad that there's a space in YouTube where you can, you can, you know, have this as an outlet for people and they're able to consume it and enjoy it and, 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 you know, better better rigs means better tone everywhere, which is uh, which is good for everybody. Indeed, I Indeed. actually have a question along those along those lines for you, Chris. Uh, with I know I don't know if like you guys, you and Mason especially, and and Brian definitely on on Instagram. Like you guys just create such incredible content, and um, like, do you ever find yourself? wanting just because you love the topic so much wanting to beat a topic to death because it's so fun to talk about but you've already made like five videos <laughs> trying to approach yeah. it from a different angle like <laughs> what's your topic if you could just talk about one thing and and hit a button and no one ever gets sick of hearing it what what could you just talk about for hours <laughs> on your channel and teach people about or you know whatever go deep on that well, I, th I think we're already ex executing on that beating that dead horse <laughs> to, to, to death uh, because <laughs> Uh, I mean, and that probably would be talking about like, you know, Steve Ray Vaughan using a fuzz face or something like really niche, but it's like, yeah. I'll just talk about that all day. It's like a, something that gets me, me going personally and I has done since I was like a 10 year old kid. So it's, it's kept, um, you know, I've sort of kept true to that throughout my life, but yeah, it's, it's hard to, you know, we do get a lot of comments saying, oh no, you're talking about Steve Ray Vaughan again. Uh, you know, and it's just, <laughs> what do they expect? I mean, they, Honestly. Like, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's sort of the angle of the channel. You know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's the thing, isn't it? It's, it's like, I mean, you, you probably get baffled by some of the comments as well, but if you don't like it, please don't watch. It's like, you know, it's not, I don't know. I don't know why people feel the need to say, you know, oh, you know, I'm, why are you doing this? It's like, you either like it or you don't, you know, it's like, just don't, stop watching if you don't like it. Yeah. I Have literally had a comment. I literally had a comment. Someone said, oh, another board build. I was like, <laughs> did you like literally did, your job? Did you read my description <laughs> on my page? Look at all 1500 of my photos. It's all I, the same stuff. We had this Do on the you, podcast. So, so I was just gonna say, I had this a comment on the podcast the other day saying, damn, these guys talk a lot. And I'm like, yeah, it's, a, it's what you're here to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, I mean, you could start the silence podcast where it's just four yeah. people and, and they just look <laughs> at each other and there's, there's a piece there's of music. That. I don't know if you, have you guys heard of that, that piece of music where it's a guy sitting at a piano and literally it's silence. And the whole piece of music is him like going up to the piano as if he's going to play 
and then he never plays a note and you hear the creak of the chair you hear the audience that's oh, an that's asmr good. that's like yeah. asmr i can't remember what the sure. piece of music is called but uh yeah i mean even <laughs> well, there if they can do it you can do it on a podcast right well, there's that whole wolf <laughs> Wolfpack album uh that was designed to kind of pull one over on on spotify where it was called sleepify and people who are Wolfpack fans were supposed to play it in their sleep so that they could earn yeah. Whoa. <laughs> this is this is a while ago, but it was like this brilliant strategy and like, you know, the one of the members of Wolfpack was on you know, all the the news uh like the morning news and stuff like that and and it had these this really funny rapport with the uh, the news anchors cuz he was kind of I don't know, like really non sequitur, it didn't really make sense, but it was like by design to kind of sound like a just a total nut. <laughs> but it was it was pretty funny and and it was effective and and, and Spotify I think ended up shutting it down you know because they was it just a had, blank track essentially it was like a twelve song album <laughs> that you would just that, you, that they would instruct their fans to play on a loop and there was nothing <laughs> they were just oh, man. No, <laughs> there was nothing on there that's amazing yeah that's amazing. I think it was called Sleepify and you were just supposed to play in your sleep that's genius <laughs> yeah but that's something that so sometimes with our YouTube channel or whatever we definitely lean towards the side of being you know tro trolling people a little bit like we don't we don't want to like troll people in a way where it's uh, bad but it, we always skirt on the line of being is it a bit too much and uh you know some of the memes might be a bit controversial or some of the videos might be a bit controversial but we seem to get away with it okay <laughs> what, I mean? what, is, what would you say is your your strategy chris because i as i said earlier in the introduction i feel like on the shorts uh, or in YouTube in general, I think that that uh, as somebody who you know is doing this a lot, the 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 thumbnail and the title are critically important. It, it j almost just as important as what the content is of the video. In and, and I feel like you know your as I said earlier, and it's no exaggeration. When I see your shorts, they are always provocative in a way that <laughs> it, it it makes me want to click. Do you do you have a strategy for how you come up with the the titles or like what do you what do you th what are you thinking when you're starting to develop uh, you know how this is going to look to the world? <laughs> it's so it's so hard to dissect it, isn't it? When you when you're because I I tend to start off with the title in my head first and then reverse engineer the video back from that almost because mm. um and I'm I'm just looking at other creators that are not necessarily in this space but I'm looking at them as how as to how they do it and they they're crushing any blues guy or any um you know guitar pedal builder in terms of views and i'm trying to get inspiration from that because i feel like our industry is a bit limited as to who we've got for um you know inspiration in a certain sense because a lot of people that make um guitar pedals or you know build pedal boards or whatever it might be they're very technical in their mind and they're very straight Forward. so like you say they might do a video titled um building my pedal board or something and it's just it's not quite it doesn't want to get you to click you know are you looking sure. on my youtube channel is that, <laughs> is that where you're getting this title from yeah right, right. <laughs> what do you find sometimes actually that uh, the most really basic titles actually do really well it's funny how like you can just put a title saying i'm done and everyone will click on it like oh my god what's he done what's he done over it? it's like but um it's yeah what i'm trying to say is um sometimes you get um, you know, yeah, you just, yeah, just want to sensation, sensationalize it. That's what I'm. I tend to do, which is sometimes bites in, in the bum because you get some comments saying you don't want to over promise with the title and the thumbnail either. It's really hard, hard balance. But um, you know, I look at guys like Mr. Beast, which is a bit random, but yeah, but, you know, he's getting like trillions of views or whatever. It's like Nuts. uh, if you can't learn from him, you can't really learn from anyone. So I'm looking at, I'm trying to do, do that side of it, but it's uh. Yeah, it's, and and the short the short form content that I think they call it like the TikTok TikTokification of social media now. It's like everyone's got such a short attention span. There is a time and a place for a long form piece of content like this. Like people will, you know, uh, sit there and listen to this if they're like like I did the other day driving. But nowadays you need to get their attention on the on their phone. So if they're just quickly going on Facebook or YouTube without even realizing it, you want to get their attention in three seconds and then hold them somehow and um that's that's i always just approach it from that angle because i know that people just have no attention spans and I, and I see people that might even make um say if they made the same kind of pedal as us but they don't have the 
the marketing side behind it, they don't get, no one knows about who they are. And it's, it's not necessarily the, the best builders that will get in front of you. It's the people that can shout the loudest almost. So it's, yeah, it's all, it's all interesting stuff, you know? Yeah. That, that's a, that's a thousand percent true. And I feel like we've even said that here on, 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 on this channel um, and on the show that, yeah, like great petals die on the vine all the time because you have to have a combination either within yourself or within the team that's around you that can kind of balance the technical with the marketing, with the manufacturing, with the business acumen. And if all those things are not in some sort of equilibrium, it's really difficult to cut through because there's, you know, there's so many choices now. It is like drinking water from a fire hose you know, for, yeah. from, from the consumer standpoint. So uh, yeah, it, it is, it is a real, it is a real challenge. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I see a lot of really small builders that have the total wrong mentality when it comes to social media. They're very much like on their, you know, talking bad about customers and they're just, um, <laughs> not, they're, you know, they're just, they're very, they're very like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, they're, or they're just, um, I don't know, their, their marketing just makes me think, how are you, how are you getting away with this? And like you say, in time, maybe they won't get away with it because there's so many options now. Why would you buy from someone that, um, you don't really, you know, resonate with. I feel like you, social media is such an important part of what we all do now that you've got to, you've got to give it some proper thought behind it. Otherwise you'll, you'll get left behind. Cause oh, and I I'd actually thought about this. I don't know if it was uh, Brian or Grant on this podcast recently that said this, but um, you know, it's when it, when it comes to, you know, 11 o'clock at night, you have to have a cutoff point as a entrepreneurial person because otherwise you're just going to work 24 seven. But I, I, I sort of thought about it at that point And I thought eventually I'm going to start to slow down as I get a bit older, maybe, or whatever it might be. But there's always some, someone willing to put in those hours at 11 o'clock. And that's always in the back of your mind, isn't it? And I wanted to actually ask you guys about that. Like it's the balance between knowing that someone out there is going to try and be, be trying to take your job as, as well. Or, or it's like, there's all these thoughts going around in your head. You know what I mean? It's like, it's such a, it's such a crazy time to be doing this now. It's like, it's exciting, but it's just crazy. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's hard. Like it's, it's definitely hard and it's always something I'm kind of <clears throat> thinking about, but I think, uh, one of the best, uh, like someone that advised me on this once, one of the best things you can do if you are going to do your own thing, start a business, probably even if you have a job working for another company, but I think the biggest thing you need to do where, as Mason was saying, like back in the day, it was who had the information was king. Now who gives it away is king. And I think if you can always be thinking or queen or whatever it may be, uh, they are royalty. And uh, I think now it's, you know, if you can always think like, how can I provide value? How can I solve the problem uh, or what this person was advising me like what keeps people up at night what keeps your customer up at night how do you solve that problem and it might not even be your product it might be you know this mm. is like one of my favorite the things that i would beat to death if i could do a topic over and over again is how to like route how, the power of signal chain and how to route a rig differently to get a different result with the same pedals like i love talking about that and maybe someone's sitting there like my gear just isn't sounding right I might be able to solve that problem for them by changing up their signal chain, but, and not buying another piece of gear. And I feel like if, if you can figure out a way to provide value, like you're doing such a great job of Chris, um, then eventually later on down the sales funnel, people will buy a piece of gear from you. But my temptation, I don't know if you guys ever get caught up on this is like, I don't want to wait three months for this person to buy something. I want them to buy it now. Like I, I need to pay payroll tomorrow or I need to pay ah, my yeah. bills next week. Like, and I get impatient with the process, but I think uh, I need to always remind myself and I'm still far from perfect on this, uh, that I first need to provide a whole lot of value free of charge so that when my products do pop up for sale, it's like, well, if he gives that much away for free, then his products must be awesome. Like the stuff I pay for must be that much better. Um, and, but it's, uh, it, I, I, I don't know if, again, I don't know if you guys feel this, but you know, I can do all of this stuff and I still, at the end of the day, will question, 
but is that really the best? Like, I don't know. Like, is this the it best way real. to do it? It doesn't I, feel I, like it's just it is. always everything I do. There's a big question mark over top, and you know, you follow the <laughs> you follow the results and everything, and and uh, you know, thankfully, I'm still in business today and having the best time of my life. But there's always that looming question mark <laughs> behind me, and so I am. Uh, I have to say this very genuinely. This is a very long rant. I feel very fortunate to be in the company of people like you guys who are further ahead on the journey when it comes to social media and you guys have all this experience I don't have and I just get to uh, steal all your best secrets. I'm taking notes as you're talking about YouTube, Chris, because this is all like really helpful stuff, like being being totally honest. No, you've, you've literally just hit the nail on the head completely there. And I, I tell you what, a test you guys can maybe do. It's quite fun, actually. I do this sometimes. Like I, go on, I go on Instagram. I find someone's social media that might be a competitor whatever it might be just look at all of their posts and look at how many are call to actions if you look at most of the small builders they're like buy my pedal buy my pedal buy my pedal yep. they're not providing any value and i think that's what you're getting out there grant it's like you it doesn't it feels counterintuitive to actually keep adding all this value and then maybe three months down the line someone might want to buy from you but it's you just got to keep yeah it's just it's the accumulation of all of those small efforts isn't it that eventually get a sale or whatever it is and it's um and it's it sounds always almost manipulative saying this but it's not it's it's not because you're actually adding more probably more value than you're getting back anyway so it's like a totally it's a win-win for everyone so yeah it's great i think i think it's also crazy not crazy it's cool to see <clears throat> you know it's like the um, i stay out of the facebook like gear pages i'm not on facebook anymore anyways account got hacked i ain't gonna try but basically like those types of uh community gear pages like people would you know are so used to just getting on there and proving why their point is you know the top tier point or whatever and that's the cool thing with like social media i do more like real stuff than i do um, like YouTube shorts or anything. Um, but what I've found through like reels is like you can post, you know, you can put so much thought and I'm sure you guys have all have had this. You can put so much thought into one video, you know, like you were talking about attention span. Okay. It has to be within seven seconds or six seconds or whatever it has to be, which is so crazy how short it is. And I'm a culprit. I'm the same way, but like you'll put all this time into the video and it will be amazing. And you're like, yeah, that was great. And then like a video that you were just like, so nonsensely just like, uh, I got to put something out. I throw it out. Gets way more interaction because it's it's not like the point of the video. Sometimes it's the question like, what is your desert island rig? Which is funny too because I definitely typoed and put dessert once, and then I got a bunch of people <laughs> recommending like cheesecake. It was great. It was awesome. Like, oh, I would definitely, I would have some some cheesecake on that land. island. <laughs> candy land on so the brain. Stupid. So I got so many posts. What's just so stupid about that too is that one real typoing, and I left it. I was told my wife, I was like, should I change it? Because don't change it. And that one real got like ten million like views yeah. and all these comments and all these shares and people are like my dessert island this is is funnel cake and i'm like shut up just go to the state fair or like whatever but it's it's cool to see uh creators and builders and stuff doing that kind of stuff like what's your favorite what's your favorite fuzz puddle and starting the conversation <coughs> and people seeing all these types of options and people recommending oh yeah you should try this it, it's it's just cool because it's it like kind of brings back the circle of like there's you know there's not just one type of fuzz there's not just one type of drive it creates the open communication between people to be able to try new stuff because i'm stuck in my way i will get a, i have stood on the hill of 15 years of playing a jhs morning glory because that's what one of my favorite overdrives but i'm not numb or prone to not to being bitter about you know someone having you know a protein or duelist or all these other overdrive pedals that are out there on the market um because I know that they're there and they're available, um, but it, it opens up the cool conversation. Like, oh yeah, I should try that. Oh, I didn't think about it trying it that way. Oh, I didn't think about that pedal combination. I didn't think about that cheesecake as my whatever. You know that kind of <laughs> stupid stuff. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's a cool opportunity to be behind the scenes because nowadays people are so like like go you know you go to movies and you see all the flashy you know oh you know that that it's not real. 
but watching <coughs> excuse me watching podcasts and walking documentaries you get to see the nat the, how natural you know people are talking about stuff i'm not a huge talker so me literally doing this is like is insane for myself but it just allows people to just see into like the stuff that they want to do the stuff that i like i started doing board building because i was obsessed with grants youtube channel and his instagram and i was i literally had screensavers of like nigel hendroff's amps and pedal board with goodwood audio like that kind of stuff like that was my screensaver for years and i learned so much from grant and from all these other guys so it's just like it just opens up a cool opportunity so it's it's cool to see regardless that people harp on y'all about again talking about that person like you're providing information to someone not you know not joe who is the not a stevie ray vaughn fan or whoever but as a total aside uh, i also have to say (laughs) it's the reason i moved to vancouver is because brian got a little intense and i just had to get out of it (laughs) yeah and so here we are different country you know change my name witness protection all that it's it's all happening (laughs) You're much closer though, because an Australian <laughs> ticket true. from Texas is very, very expensive. It's but true. I'm originally from Michigan, so Canada is not that far from Michigan originally. Right. Well, I'd love to say you're always welcome, Brian, but I'm a little unsure at this point. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we uh, we want to keep obviously going with this, but uh, we're going to stop for our last set of sponsors here. Uh, Brian, do you want to take it away? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. As we mentioned every week the sponsors are amazing and they make the show possible um, because there's a lot of behind the stuff, scene stuff that goes into these podcasts and we're just grateful for these guys and the opportunity that we have to sit here and talk about gear. So <coughs> our final two sponsors and they're, you know, they're definitely those, those guys that go out of their way to provide amazing services and um, opportunities and to just let you excel at your craft and that's going to be Bestronics. Uh, the guys over at btpa.com they do plugs and cables and accessories they do all sorts of rack stuff um, pretty much if you can think it up it's probably already a part number that Brad has already shipped out a thousand times so go check them out uh, btpa.com use the code DUTCHHAIRS D-A-C-H-A-I-R-S for 10% off go buy some plugs for your next build or while you're building and you need some supplies, use that code. I literally just recommended it to a guy yesterday um, for some uh, a MIDI cable, seven pin, five pin. They have all the pins, so go check them out. And then our final sponsor is going to be Stringjoy with the guys over at Stringjoy.com. The you know hand me, um, USA strings uh, they have a subscription option you can you know get a couple packs a month you can get a whole box whatever you need for your strings if you're a string destroyer as we've heard mason is a string destroyer so he's he's getting them in shipments as we can say pallets. um but yeah, pallets. I, have, I have my, my pallet yeah i get one pallet a month uh, as, 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 uh just to keep everything fresh right? See, if you're a one pallet a month or you're a one pack a day, whatever it is, they they can hook you up with the uh, 10% off, B-O-A-R-D-S, at stringjoy.com. So check them out. You won't be upset. I guess you wouldn't be upset because you're getting <laughs> strings, but you won't be disappointed. So, all right, we'll throw it back to the podcast. So with our remaining time here to kind of take us out, uh, for people that are not familiar with Chris, he's not only making these beautiful pedals that pedal pawn offers, but he's also in a, a, quite an accomplished guitar player. And I, I would like to ask Chris, if we were to deviate from our own products and we were to advise somebody about getting Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix style tones, what would be some pedals that you think would be good recommendations that are not overly expensive if somebody wants to kind of dip their toe into some of those fuzz tones, univibe tones, octave tones, uh, treble booster tones. Are there some sleepers out there that you've been sitting on that maybe you'd be willing to share with somebody who might be able to, you know, kind of, again, try some of these if they're unsure if maybe it's the right effect for them and they want to get something that is of good quality that's going to kind of move them in the right direction as to those sort of kind of, let's say, s- sonic 
uh, masterpieces of the the two greats, uh, Jimmy and, and Stevie. Now that's that's the ultimate question, isn't it? We're all, we're all trying to find the answer to that, I suppose. I I'd say just before we even get into the the pedals side of it, for me, something that major that I personally found, and it's funny because I, I you might actually have a different take on this, but for me, when I started to get my Fender Blackface style amp cooking, getting it using an attenuator and getting it really because I know you guys maybe well Mason I know you're certainly you know more of the the Dumble-esque style um, you lean that kind of route a bit more um, and for me get, getting the the amp cooking made any almost any pedal sound 10 times better in my opinion so I could literally just plug in a bog standard tube screamer into that attenuated cranked amp and it would sound I'd get so much closer to those Stevie tones and it's almost the ultimate base uh, platform for any pedal that I could recommend going forward. But I'd, I'd say, um, well, when, when, when you first said about any pedals to recommend that weren't our own products, I was going to say about, um, you know, the King tone, King tone guitar stuff, like Jesse Davies stuff is crazy good. Um, and he's been a big inspiration to me, uh, over the last 10, 15 years actually. And, um, his, but his stuff is on the more premium priced end of, of stuff. So, I'd say honestly, if you're just starting out, you just you need to get the, the Stevie Hendrix thing. You can't really go wrong with this, you know, the the Ibanez TS9, um, some of the Dunlop stuff. Um, what, what was that? Oh, what was that vibe? Um, there's a few good vibes out there for like thirty or forty pounds, like, like really cheap ones. I can't I can't remember what they are. Like, um, is it the the Nux and NUX or something? Not are they digital vibes or are they actual like photo cells? Um. I can't remember. I can't remember now. I, I, I need to look more into this. I know, I know there was one that was um, a really cheap Chinese one and um, didn't sound too bad, to be honest, but um, let me think. What else is there? Oh, it's really tricky. I, I, I'd i say it's, it's, it's so hard. I mean, if you can, I mean, obviously this is a bit of a blanket statement here, but if you can go to a guitar shop and get your hands on stuff in person, that's always the best test, isn't it? As opposed to having to listen to a thousand demos because I'm sure you're sure you guys can agree like you can listen to something demoed in one context and it sounds like a different pedal to another context it's like um so if you can get to a guitar shop yeah just try as many things out as you can and um yeah so that answer that answer was all over the place there sorry I was like, <laughs> but yeah well, I, I used to think that the the deja vibe was a really good entry and maybe not the the best vibe out there but I think until full tones recent sort of departure from the industry they used to be at least if you got sort of the the white the white one that that was kind of the the sort of mid-size enclosure those were usually under two hundred dollars and you know they sounded pretty decent i think that you needed to max out the lfo internally uh to kind of get the best out of it and they were i think just doing it that way to probably preserve the the life of the pedal but uh, you know, no risk, no reward. Uh, so you got to yeah, go yeah. for it with the LFO. Um, but uh, that was that was, I think, it used to be a pretty good choice. I actually don't really know a quality vibe to recommend that's that's inexpensive. I feel like all the good ones at this point are pretty well known. Uh, yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree with that. Yeah and, yeah, and then fetch a premium price. Although I will say on Fuzz, there has been one that is has impressed me that I've been speaking about a lot uh, to anybody that will listen, at least which is the Variac fuzz from Dunlop or M is it MXR? MXR. The, this, it's the super badass Variac fuzz. And it is essentially, I, I, cause I was curious what it was. It's basically their band of gypsies fuzz. Uh, but it has a voltage control. So you can, in essence, imagine the sag control on like a voodoo lab pedal power Two, in essence, built into the fuzz so that you can bring the voltage down, and kind of sag it. And it's not exactly the same as a battery because, you know, as we know, carbon batteries are not just restricting voltage. They're also doing current limiting. It doesn't do current limiting. Uh, but it, it still has a cool sound. It's just another way to kind of brown out the fuzz a little bit more if you want it to kind of get a little bit saggier. And I think that that fuzz is really excellent. And I, I think it's maybe $130 or something like that. It's a pretty reasonable fuzz that uh, I think competes uh, with, fuzzes that are double its uh its cost so I, I would say for fuzz face that's a pretty great one in my opinion um 
I'm trying to think of who else I, you know, who else? I don't know if they're still making them, but they were really pretty affordable was Chase Tone had a fuzz for a while. And I think that they were also like sub $200, maybe even sub $170. And I, I'm pretty sure it was Jermaine. No, I don't think it was. It was it was silicon, but it sounded really great. Uh, my uh, my my friend Owen Barry was a big uh, proponent of it, and he had, he had told me about it, and I had bought one. I thought, oh, this sounds really good. And I remember it was way more affordable than I was expecting uh, for what it was. And and I think that that's a really great one for treble boosters. I don't I don't really know. Are there any sleepers out there? Because if presumably if they're using vintage you know, or germanium uh, transistors, it's going to be expensive just on, on parts. So there's hard to get like, you know, <laughs> a sub hundred dollar treble booster that's using the, the uh, original uh, components. Are, are you aware of any that you could recommend? Honestly, it's really hard. Even this whole question was hard to answer really. Cause it's like, I would, like you said about the vibe, I think sometimes you just have to pay up if you want the, the real yeah. deal. Like if you want a photo cell vibe or you, yeah. want a treble booster that's been properly specced and someone's actually sifted through the right you know tolerances for the transistors whatever it's like you want someone that's going to actually and the good thing about this stuff is you know you can even if you have to spend two hundred dollars on something you probably get your money back on reverb i mean like it's not like it's actually going to cost you that in the long run if you decide not to keep it so i'd say it's worth if you can just paying that bit extra and getting the the one that you know is going to do the job you need it to Mm. I uh, yeah. <clears throat> I have a potentially controversial question for you. Okay, <laughs> maybe offensive, and I don't want this to offend you, Chris. <laughs> no, no, go, I go ahead. If, <laughs> I almost you wonder know, if I know already what this is. You don't. I guarantee you don't. Um, <laughs> if I, if what's I my do, you know those scenes in movies where there's <laughs> maybe a couple and they broke up, but they had a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that scene in the movie where they're both like the dog sitting in front of them. They're like come here boy and they're both doing it at the same time you know what i mean and yeah, they're just like yeah. whoever the dog chooses that person gets to keep the dog and we'll go our separate ways <laughs> let's say and this is where it gets offensive but let me finish the question and i i don't think you will be offended let's say you are that dog chris <laughs> and in front of you is standing hendrix and stevie they're both <laughs> saying come on chris come on <laughs> <laughs> who are you walking to <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta pick one of them you can't walk down the middle which one do you walk towards i i've contemplated this decision every day of my life so um, but not this question right you've never quite <laughs> thought have, about it well, like the this dog, the dog, he wasn't <laughs> quite framed in the same context <laughs> but, um, yeah oh man that is that is the that is a real hard question and i, I do know the answer and it's probably gonna get me a lot of hate so yeah, clip this, Mason. This is a short waiting. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, no, we're gonna no, let you. We're gonna let you do it, Chris. We're gonna let you yeah. do it. <laughs> no, but I, I definitely have to choose Stevie. Okay, I would because it's it's something about Stevie that Hendrix does this to me in a certain way. But if you haven't listened to Stevie for a few weeks and I listen to him and I'm like, ah, it's just just gets me every time. It's just it's something about it, and I can't quite put my finger. On is it why the total is. package? Is it the playing? Is it the tone? Is it a certain technique? songwriting just yeah absolutely everything. just stevie like, yeah just stevie is something about it and hendrix sort of had that same package but in a different way for, for some reason stevie just resonates with me on a, a level that i can't even describe so it's really strange but i would have to pick stevie because hendrix doesn't quite do that as the same way you know um, it's the upside down headstock isn't it yeah <laughs> that's yep. right it's that extra bit of tension from the the e yep. string the way he and also Jimi hendrix was taller Stevie Ray Vaughan, people don't realize that he was pretty he's short. Tiny. Yeah, he was a short, short king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think he's like he's like five eight or something like that. Oh wow! Yeah, no, I think he's short. I've, I've read that he was like five five or something. Crazy! I have no idea. Stevie Ray Vaughan was five five. I I, I googled it. I I um. By the way, I got a, a, a weird Jimmy story Vaughan is pretty short too. Uh, That's why the stacks always look so big in comparison. <laughs> Wait, he's actually. Let's verify this. He is. Oh, no, he's 5'5". Five, five. Steve Ray Vaughan is 5'5". Five, five. No way. Dang. That's crazy. Yeah. But, so but, so he was like Tom Cruise, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so I, this is a short right here, Chris. Steve Ray Vaughan. <laughs> <laughs> actual yeah. height. And I heard that 5'5 uh, five, five is when he was standing on top of his tube screamer as well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. well do, you, do you want to know something weird? What, once we did um, 
a me. It was actually talking about this exact thing. It was talking about Stevie's height. And um, there's a picture, a famous picture of Stevie standing next to Albert King. And Albert King was a giant, you know. Yeah. Um, but we actually, like, they, they looked like that. There was a bit of a height difference, but we we photoshopped it so Stevie was even shorter. <laughs> and um, oh just, just so gosh. all the comments would be like, <laughs> all the comments were like, oh my God, Stevie was so short. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it was just like those little sort of things. Sometimes we just like reframe history a little bit just to get. <laughs> well, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you look at the in session, I think Stevie's on a stool that's actually really high. So it sort right. of creates more of a balance between their heights. That's crazy. I, speaking of, I mean, I'm, I'm like six foot, but I met the other day I met, um, you know, Jared James Nichols. Yeah, he's like six four or something like that, or six five. He, he's actually. It made me feel like an absolute. You know, like like I was like four foot five or something. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny. <laughs> like yeah, it's funny. Stevie people people look at Stevie and they think he was like a giant. And maybe it's yeah. because his was, hands were disproportional talking. or something. Yeah, his hands were disproportion, disproportionate big to his body. It's like um, and I was talking about that with Stevie's nephew Tyrone Vaughan. Um, mm because he has the same sort of genetics in his arms and his hands. And he was like, it's just the Vaughn trait. We've got big hands and we've got small bodies. <laughs> is he, is he also short like that? Five foot five? No, he's actually quite tall, actually. To fair. Probably bigger than Jimmy. Cause you're saying Jimmy's quite. Yeah. I think well. Jimmy's like five, eight or, you know, you know, yeah, cause I'm yeah. also six feet tall and have. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know how we got to that. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how we got to that. See, <laughs> discussing that. See Grant. I thought Sorry, Grant guys. was going to ask him uh, if he likes pineapple on his pizza because we always talk <laughs> about pizza. Oh. pizza. It's, I thought I thought that's where he was going. Does but pizza I was exist in the very UK? Wrong. Like you guys, you guys yeah, we, pizza over there? Just landed. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> yeah, exactly. New food just, just, just got here. New food Monday. It's like pasta sauce and bread <laughs> yeah. and you bake it with cheese. Oh my gosh. Honestly, what I was doing, I was doing a tour in America and our tour manager was like, asking us the most basic question. He's like, do you guys have bicycles over there? And I was like, <laughs> oh my yeah, God, we do. <laughs> we, we do. Um, but, Lots but, of those. I tell you, yeah, you guys, you guys call, um, it sort of freaks us, freaks us out a bit. You guys call it a pizza pie. Like, uh, like as opposed maybe. to a pizza slice or something that, freak, that yeah. freaks us out. Oh, well, I think, I think maybe you, only you call regionally, it? I think only regionally, maybe they call it a pizza pie. I, I've, I've never heard it ah. referred to that in California, but you know, maybe that's a, uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a, a middle America thing. I don't know. Oh, where, right. I mean, yeah. Where were where were you touring? I, uh, like Indiana, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah they, that's they, yeah. That's a northern <laughs> thing. As that, the Americans, I'm like ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. from Michi <laughs> I'm originally from Michigan, so that was a that was a northern thing. Hearing hearing that, but then going to like New York, we're like, oh yeah, get a slice. I'm like, a slice of what? What are yeah. you talking about? They're like pizza. I'm like, why would it? I was thinking you were talking about like a slice of bread. Like, what are you talking about? But yeah, no. <laughs> pizza pie is definitely a northern thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Well, yeah. <laughs> any any um <laughs> any final thoughts before we wrap with Chris today? I just want to, you know, end just personally to say thank you for being here, Chris. And, uh, you know, again, I, I appreciate uh, your your YouTube channel. Uh, we will, of course, have it linked in the description and show notes if people want to check out what you're doing in addition to the website. If people want to see the products that Chris is offering through Pedal Pond. Uh, and uh, just uh, thanks for the conversation. I, 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 th I feel like uh, there are certainly many more hours that could be had uh conversing about nightmare manufacturing stories or or, or just uh you know just sympathizing with the the nature of being in in the uh, music industry but thank you again for being here but i'll turn it over to uh, brian and grant for any final thoughts comments questions before we wrap up I think my, I just, uh, yeah, go Brian, ahead, Grant. Please, <laughs> no, 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 no. I've been my, talking. Okay. You go. My question. <laughs> um, this is the this is the pro of having three hosts on the show. Is, uh, <laughs> we all have lots of questions for you, Chris. Um, <laughs> what is the pedal in your lineup? In the pedal pond lineup, which one are you most proud of? I don't own. And the context for this, I don't own any pedal pond pedals. So if I was to go on your website right now. Which one are you like? Yep, yeah, this is the one that everything just came together. This is you know my favorite or most proud of whatever it might be. To be honest, it's it's got to be the the Texan twang. Okay, it's like a it's that is the, the treble booster that we were talking about before because it's for me it's something that I never thought would get me closer to Stevie's tone than like um, 
anything else that I tried. And I'm not, I feel like, again, I'm not, I sound nothing like Stevie, but in, in if you're going to try and sound as close to him, that was the thing that got me. It was like a revelation, like a breakthrough, which again was based on the, the Cesar Diaz, um, Texas Ranger. And again, it was a bit, that was a bit of a sleeper pedal. No, no one was really pushing it too much and talking about it. And now you just can't find them. If you can, they're definitely you know, thousands of dollars. If, if you, if you get an original, you know, Cesar Diaz signed one. And um, yeah, I'd say the Texan twang for me is probably the one I'm most proud of. And it just happens to be the, the one that we sell the most of as well. So it's like maybe they, um, the market's spoken on, on that as well. So um, yeah, yes. I think that's, yeah, I think that's, um, but yeah, thanks for asking. I, honestly, I, we, we could definitely chat about this stuff for hours today. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's like, it's uh, to, to speak to kindred spirits like this. Um, yeah, it's super cool to, you know, just, yeah, meet like, like-minded people. So thank you very much for that. I was just going to say, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, the, the knowledge and information that you can, you know, provide the people is super cool. Um, I've never played your pedals before, but I have heard a lot about them. Um, um, Eric Gales has come through the shop a lot and, um, I saw that he was on your guys' site. Do you know which, uh, obviously, you know, <laughs> which pedal does he have? Oh, that, that uh, was the fuzz, uh, the, the fuzz okay, that we great. make. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I'm just very appreciative of you coming on and chatting with us over all sorts of nonsense questions. And um, yeah, so thank you. And yeah, I have to say, you. thank you as well. I know you already spoke about this a bit, but thank you just for providing awesome content that is, you know, like we were saying before, is there to provide value and bring us all a little bit closer. If we're going to stay with the the saying we have on the show brings us all a little bit closer to tone town because of what you're doing and uh just because of your contribution so uh i really appreciate that and uh keep it up keep up the awesome work and doing your thing it's inspirational for us and uh, really enjoy it damn I, like likewise back to you guys honestly thank you thank you so much you you're all in your own way yeah i'll tell you what i was thinking this before you you guys compliment each other so much on the show as well not even just the dynamic of your the way you guys vibe together but your expertise in different uh, fields is, is the perfect. Um, you can merge it all together and get the ultimate pedal board ever. <laughs> so it's, yeah, yeah it's, just, it's awesome to chat to you guys and I appreciate the uh, knowledge that you shared to me as well. So um, yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I do have to do a side note. Well, I'm sorry. I know we're trying to end. <laughs> um, I am now in a race to beat you in subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> You have 207,000 and I only have 2,000. So I'm only at yep. 205,000 <laughs> behind. But I really think with some persistence that I can I can probably push through in the next week and top it, but we'll see. Yep. I'll stay tuned we'll check for back that. in seven days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, man. All right, guys. Well, uh, until next time, thank you again, Chris. And and I should mention, I, I noticed it before, but didn't have a chance to interject. Thank you for uh, plugging the, uh, for those of you who are viewing, the, the tone secret there is in the back, a, a, a discontinued right product, but uh, it's still still a favorite of mine. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you again, Chris, for being here. And uh, <laughs> hopefully we can do this again at, at some point in the near future. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much. Right, awesome. Bye, guys.